Yes, I think I think we can we may start. Does it work? No? Maybe now last one should be yes. I think we shall start now. This is not 10 after 3, but after I finish my presentation of the speaker. <laughs> so, so our first speaker today is Jung Han Kim from Korea, from Yonsei University. And his educational background, well, he got his Bachelor and Master of Science degrees from this Yonsei University in Korea. And then uh, got his uh, PhD degree uh, from the University of Notre Dame in Indiana, USA, under Anand Pillar in 1996. Under Anand Pillar in 1996. Well, his recent publications include uh, a book on simplicity theory in the Oxford University Press and his awards. Well, for example, uh, Korean Mathematical Society Research Paper Award from 2013, 1996 Sachs Prize for PhD thesis, several grants from Samsung Science and Technology Foundation, NSF and NLF of Korea. So today he will speak on amalgamation factors and homology groups in modern theory. Byunam Jung Han Kim. Thank you for the uh, uh, Okay, uh, first of all, I want to say my thanks to the organizer for this honorable and memorable invitation. But could you and please use the microphone? There, over there. This is mine. It's just to... Ah, uh, uh, working? Oh, yes, it seems so. <coughs> no, yeah, it works on... Oh? You have to switch on. Well, there is a switch at the bottom. Okay. Uh, okay? Working? Yeah. Okay, okay. And uh, that this Congress is being held in my hometown Seoul uh, as my pledge more. So, the, uh, let me start. So, the, uh, mainly uh, I'm going to speak about this uh, joint war with John Goodrich and Alexei Kolesnikov. Uh, Kolesnikov is here. John Goodrich went back home. Uh, Basically, we uh, developed the homology theory in the context of model theory. So that's the main thing, including the Frankish uh, correspondence. Okay. Uh, so throughout this talk, I'm going to fix a category, call it C, call it C, and S is just a finite set of natural numbers throughout this talk. And uh, as you know, the groupoid is category, where well, every morphism is in dot <coughs> So if X is a family of set ordered by inclusion, you know, there's a fancy way of understanding this just partial ordered set as a category. Uh, so the object is just a member in X, and uh, you know, this, the single inclusion map uh, between two uh, subsets in X uh, as just the, uh, this inclusion map as morphism. And we say this set is subset closed uh, whenever you know, there's a subset relation, then just any, every subset of the member is a member of X as well. Okay, and then the uh, now, uh, given across the set, this is a uh, category, then we can think about the functor app, uh, so that this is just a transition map. So the functor sends the object's object, and uh, morphism to morphism. So this is the uh, image of uh, 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 morphism, just the inclusion map. So this is actually morphism. Uh, within this uh, category. And then this notation means that the image of the uh, object under, under this uh, transition map, and so that that is actually image of f of u uh, under this transition map, uh, transition map so inside uh, f of v. Okay, this is my notation. So uh, now, it's nothing to do with the model theory. It's just a very, very general definition of the uh, collection of amenable, we just name it amenable collection of functors. This is just, uh, you know, the general definition, nothing to do with model theory. Of course, the beyond the intention is model theory. So, let A be a non-empty collection of functors such that X is a various subset clause from parset, subset of parsets. 
of the finite set of natural numbers. And then we say this collection amenable, it satisfies these four actions. First, uh, invariance on the isomorphism. That is, you know, F is F belongs to uh, uh, this collection. And then G is isomorphic to F, then G also in uh, this collection. What is isomorphism? Means that it's natural. So X is, say, pulse about the uh, S, some finite set. And then Y is a pulse about T. And the size of S and T are the same, so that there is some bijection, not necessarily uh, order preserving. And then Y is just the image of X under that bijection. And then G is just the, uh, taking the composition of inverse of that bijection together with F. Means, in other words, the G is actually generated by this, uh, this F together with that, you know, just uh, separate bijection from S to T. So we say that G is also not that, then G is also A. This should be the action, right? Uh, then the, this action says that this collection is crossed on the restrictions and unions. So it says, say, X is, X is a domain of this functor. Then F is a member if and only if any element in X is restriction to the power set is also a member. So from up and down, it says that this Collection is crossed under restriction, and down to up it says actually it is crossed under uh, unions. Okay, three it looks complicated, but actually for model theories, this is just the uh, you know this is naming parameter. It means localization is just naming parameters. So, so in some sense, suppressing the parameter or nullifying the parameter. So say the app is like that. Uh, the T is a member. For example. Uh, your, 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 your domain is power set of 0, 1, 2. And then you want to nullify a 2. Then your new domain with localized is restricted to only 0, 1, power set of 0, 1. Right? Power set is 0, 1. But when you send 0, object 0, then you always, you know, this nullify them together. So that is here. So T is always embedded and hidden here. And then similarly, transition map. You know, always T, T, T is nullified, but it's always uh, there. That means for models here, it's just coming from, you know, the uh, naming parameter, naming parameter. And then the uh, localization and extension, this two uh, operation, this two condition as well, can be swapped. So this is very, very general, very, very, uh, you know, this uh, general setting. And then to, you know, transparent example, relatively transparent example, you can have mind is uh, one is just the tetrahedral free, tetrahedral free random ternary graph. So it's a uh, uh, hypergraph, so, you know, not binary, but ternary. But you can have anything possible except tetrahedron with all this, uh, you know, surfaces with this uh, ternary edges. So tetrahedron, except tetrahedron, Everything else is possible. So this is just a graph. And then there are standard way of this graph as a category. That is, object is now just, just, just a subset. You know, it's an infinite structure. Then uh, object is just a subset. And then morphism is just partial embedding. There is a, a standard way of understanding first the structure. OK, I'm uh, talking a little bit about model theory. And later on, I'll only talk about model theory. So, uh, and tetrahedral three, ah, back, back. and then you, you collect all this, the, uh, the functors, the domain is just this the subset of the set, and the vertices are distance. Only requirement is all the vertices are distance. Then uh, it is not hard to see that this is the uh, amenable. So amenable collection is, is uh, kind of, you can easily find in many mathematical contexts. And another interesting and uh, some, some critical example is actually you take the finite arbitrary finite group G and think of like a finite connected group point uh, with versus group, which is G, isomorphic to G. So this is the, uh, you know, structure wise, you have one sort which is only collection of object. And the, the other sort is only collection of morphism. And then of course there is the, uh, uh, Composition may be in morphisms, and then there is the uh, maps from morphism source to the uh, object source, designating 
uh, initial object and subject, uh, the terminal object of the morphism. That is the basic structure. And then, and then take that structure as the uh, category. That means, again, now object is in that structure from subset. And then uh, the morphism is partial embedded. So, uh, a little bit confusing, but you know, it's a very standard way of understanding arbitrary first of the model, first of the structure as a, as a category. And then again, the collection of all these functors so that the, uh, uh, the vertices are distinct, then it is again uh, another. So, these are kind of transparent examples you can have in mind. Uh, Okay, so as you possibly uh, know in our model series that the uh, first of the structure, this first example is simple or stable theories or structures, and the second one is stable theory or stable structures. Okay, now I'm going to define homology group within this, this context. Okay, so for the rest I fix some, say, object, and then A sub D is collection of all the functors, and then I fix some analog uh, inside the, this fixed analog collection of functors such that the empty set is just precisely images B. Okay, then I'm going to talk about n simplex in B. Uh, so it's just n simplex is the functor such that domain is full power set of S and the size of S is n plus 1. And then the S is called the support of S. Then you can uh, you, uh, the, uh, extend this simplex as, uh, as usual, as in singular homology theory, you can free a value number, formal sum, it's a formal sum with integer collection. So what is the uh, 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 two simplex, two, two dimensional simplex? Uh, so two dimensional simplex is a triangle, so, so uh, there are three vertices. So actually, this uh, support somehow represents the, the vertices, right? So two, two simplex is uh, there are three supports, so triangle, and the three simplex is, uh, you know, the three-dimensional uh, three simplex, uh, simplex, which is actually tetrahedral. So there are four vertices, uh, and so on. Okay, then I can think about, you know, we can think about, you know, standard way of understanding the boundary map. So, for example, when n is, uh, uh, say, three, say, three-dimensional simplex, say, uh, vertices, uh, that is actually tetrahedral 0, 1, 2, 3. Then how many surfaces? How many triangles there? There are, there are four triangles. So actually, if you take a boundary map, then n simplex goes into uh, n minus 1 simplex. What is that boundary? There are, so one, say, 3 simplex, that is tetrahedron, has four many uh, surfaces, that is four many uh, two simplex. So forget about say top or top support, then bottom is actually zero boundary. Then if you forget about the uh, support, the, the second support, then uh, there is first boundary and so on. So more precisely, if your support is like that, then forget about the uh, you know zero and first and blah blah blah. Then you restrict the that. Then this is actually from the. Uh, uh, n, n simplex, then this is n minus 1 simplex. Then for poor, uh, for poor the boundary, now boundary is actually given a simplex, full boundary is alternating sum with the alternating sign. So that is actually chain. Where, where does that ordering come from? Pardon? Ordering that you this is, as I said, this is just a finite set of natural numbers. I declared this always throughout my talk. So natural number has a linear ordering. Okay. Okay, so you can extend linearly with uh, 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 chains. So, uh, so oh no, no, chain, right? So the boundary map actually goes n chain to n minus one chain, and then uh, as usual, as usual, uh, so the corner is corner is the boundary map. But the fact is, if you take twice boundary map, then it vanishes. It's zero. So that. Uh, you can actually define homology group as usual in singular homology theory, so that the what is the uh, cycle? That is just the corner of the uh, 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 corner of the uh, n simplex. 
I mean, this this map. There is there is some chain. See, there is just a chain, n chain, n cycle is just n chain. If you take the boundary, then it just vanishes. That is uh, n cycles, n cycles. And n boundary is boundary of higher one dimension higher. You take the uh, right. So it's uh, image of that. So that due to this fact, uh, this group is uh, uh, well defined. And this Abelian group, of course, uh, and then you know the fact is this some it can be non-trivial group because some cycle, some cycle doesn't need to be coming from the boundary of the higher dimensional uh, one dimensional higher. So this makes non-trivial group. Uh, okay, so now I have to talk about the amalgamation property. Of course, you know all this behind thing is the model theory. So far. Honestly, I haven't really seriously talked about model theory at all, but all the behind scene is model theory. So if you've already, for model theory, this is an amalgamation familiar notion. But let me just explain that. Uh, so, hmm. okay, so an amalgamation, A is an amalgamation for any systems, if say P minus N, P minus n is just the P power sign of n is just ordered by evolution. Then P minus n is uh, you just take out the largest element as a, as a partial order set. You know that order is just ordered by evolution, and then that be complicated into poor power sign of n, which is n minus n simplex. That is an amalgamation. So for example, three amalgamation is just uh, three edges. Three edges can be amalgamated into one triangle, right? Then uh, it is three amalgamation. Four amalgamation is given, say, compared over four triangles can be amalgamated to one tetrahedron. That is four amalgamation. And then NCA or less than equal to amalgamation means just one of two amalgamation. And strong two amalgamation is stronger than two amalgamation, saying that given two simplexes, two simplexes with the common intersection, uh, its union can be extended to another simplex. That is two amalgamation. And then n uniqueness is when you extend uh, this minus to the full power set, that is m minus simplex, up to isomorphism, there is a unique way of extending it. So for example, tetrahedron free graph does not have four, four amalgamation because you know, this four triangle cannot, it's, it's, it, the name, the name says it's a tetrahedron free, so it doesn't have four amalgamation. And then this example, groupoid example, uh, is not hard to see. That it has three amalgamation, three uniqueness, if and only four amalgamation, if and only the center of the group is zero. Okay, now I have to talk about the particular uh, particular uh, cycles, <laughs> particular size, which is very, very important to notion. And the rest, A is always non trivial, one amalgamation, strong amalgamation. So that is called share. Share is uh, very, very important to change, which is actually cycle. Uh, it's over the form like that, and satisfying this compatibility condition. And then the uh, answer is n cycle. If you take a boundary, then you know it's not hard to check that this vanishes, this zero. Uh, moreover, if f is some n plus one simplex, if you take a boundary, that is answer. But uh, the the thing is that the uh, answer doesn't need to come always over this form. So some answer doesn't need to be a boundary, right? Then makes the group non-trivial. So particularly what you can show is uh, this is you know a lot of members, you know, it's uh, you know so not not the straightforward theorem. So some work, and then you can prove that if this collection has n plus one CA, that is one of two n plus one amalgamation, then actually every member is the shell. This makes everything easier. So you only uh, Pay your attention into, concentrate your attention into only shell. Particularly if it has n plus 2 amalgamation. Then what does that mean? Plus, n plus 2 amalgamation says any n shell can be amalgamated to uh, n plus 1 simplex. That is, you know, this shell is bounded, means this is trivial. So, uh, uh, 1 of the n plus 1 amalgamation, but n plus 2 amalgamation, that is trivial. Okay, so I introduced the uh, homology group. So now I'm going to talk about model theory. So, uh, so you know, this is kind of uh, very uh, the condensed way of uh, explaining just uh, 
so far developed in model theory. So throughout all the last uh, maybe uh, throughout maybe T is a rosy theory. Uh, it means that the T or its model is model theory. Uh, for additional uh, rotational simplicity, it has elimination of imaginaries, and if it's T is simple, elimination of uh, hyper imaginaries. So M is actually any Q. So rose means that there's good notion of independence between subset of any model of T. Particularly, uh, stable structures or the collection of structure properly contain the class of simple structures and properly contain the uh, class of rose structures. Stable structure, for example, just in the sand or like uh, uh, algebraic cross field, separable cross field, differential cross field. And simple uh, unstable structure is a random grab or through the finite field. And then rosy non simple structure is particularly real field. Okay, then, uh, so uh, a formula is said to be having all the property. If you can find, say, countably many element in the model, such that, that the uh, P of A I A J hold in the model if and only I, I less than J. Particularly, for example, in the rear, you take the formula X strictly less than Y, then just the increasing sequence witness that formula has the order property. And then T is stable when no formula has the order property. So for example, I just explained that real is not stable because of that reason. Equivalently, non-fruiting satisfies stationary over any algebraic cross the set. So I'm not going to define what non-fruiting is, but there is a notion of non-fruiting, and then stable is uh, uh, equivalently to define this notion, does not uh, satisfy stationary over any algebraic cross set. What is that? So you can read this anchor notion as this is just the subset of some fixed saturated big model, big model of the uh, uh, complete theory. Uh, and then this read that A set A is non forking independent with C over B bar. B bar means algebraic closure of B. And then what is this? A and A prime realize same type over B bar. Uh, or you can understand it that there is an automorphism of the big model fixing B bar pointwise, sending A to A prime. And then, you know, this condition is called the uh, uh, stationarity and state is set. And this fact is something I proved uh, uh, in my thesis and uh, afterward. So, uh, non-forking satisfies symmetry, non-forking satisfies transitivity, non-forking satisfies local character. So, uh, for any set B and finite A, there is some base set uh, such that this for uh, More precisely, it ch actually is uh, less than equal to the length size. Okay, so, so if you take simple, then simple automatically have non fucking surprise, uh, this symmetry, independence, transitivity, and local character. So, uh, and then the, uh, we play, we actually, not only that, it satisfies the amalgamation, as I just mentioned. So symmetry, transitivity, local character, just by previous result, finite character from the definition, and then extension comes uh, true for any theory indeed. So, uh, Rosy, then, you know, it's a uh, Rosy theory, non-forking, does not have symmetry. So, you know, non-forking does not have satisfy independence, but, you know, people have to keep working on it. So, working on uh, writing a paper. So, they now uh, solve forking, introduce the solve forking, which is, uh, uh, you know, supply independence notion, uh, any, any context, it then we take Rosy. So, that means that stable is, uh, simple is Rosy, but there is, you know, rose theory. Now, real is uh, something within our context having this independent notion. So, uh, at the moment, I think I should mention, you know, this is one of the reasons I'm being invited is that my work on simplicity theory, and as the chair staff, that my book on simplicity theory is being activated in um, Oxford University Press out there. Uh, I hope the book is sold out. But, Particularly, I have to mention, you know, many uh, after this uh, work and the initial Shalas work, you know, as you know, you know, this eminent, all this eminent reading research work on simplicity theories. Uh, and I think I cannot mention all of them, but I should mention, of course, Shalas, Shots, Kent, Lay. But I think I have to mention Frank Wagner, who almost single handedly developed this uh, group theory, uh, hyper definable group and type definable group and model theory. And then in the joint work with myself, I mean, collaborating work, we proved that this form, using form recognition, uh, you know, had the uh, group configuration theorem, which actually relies on the uh, uh, 
uh, friends who are on the generic uh, full construction. Okay, so I think the nobody, uh, okay, I, I, I did my job. So, so now, okay. Okay, so, right. Okay, so now I have to think, I have to, so as I said, okay. Sorry, a little bit. So look at this is this is nothing to do even with model theory, just the general context. And then I want to speak about model theory. How does model theory fit in this context? Okay. So particularly Rose theory, and then uh, just the fixate complete type, uh, actually strong type of OB. So B is algebraically close. And then this a category in our model. What what is that? That is object is algebraically close subs of the model containing B. And then more is a partial B elementary map. Elementary map, but pointing uh, B, fixing P, B point towards. And then now you, I collect uh, with this fixed complete type, complete uh, strong type, I collect all these uh, functors such that, you know, empty set contains, contains the base. And then uh, all these vertices are of the form is of the form algebraic closure of the realization of the complete type. Uh, independent, which is independent, of, of course, the, you know, independence uh, in Rose theory, uh, with respect over, you know, image of the empty set over the base. And then the other uh, element, this image, is uh, algebraic closure of the B together with all the vertices. Then it's not hard to see that this collection is a uh, collection of all the p-pointers, is actually amenable. So that we can talk about this the homology group within this complete type context. So that uh, from now on, uh, this say this amenable collection has three amalgamation has certain property. I simply says this complete type P has certain property. So that the uh, corollary is if we rewritten the previous fact uh, within this context, then uh, you know P has one of two n plus two amalgamation then n homology group is zero. Particularly, as I said, simple theory has three amalgamations, so the first homology group is zero. But recently with my student, we proved this is true for any root theory. Uh, and then in our example, tetrahedral free graph, even if it does not have amalgamation, you know, every homology group is zero. So homology group in this example, uh, unfortunately, doesn't detect much. But this is a good thing which detects something, such that the, uh, the second homology group is, is center. So, okay. Uh, now I'm going to talk about Frevich theorem, uh, Frevich correspondence. Uh, so, on this section, I now even assume further that uh, our theory is only stable. And stable theory, we have very nice description between uniqueness and amalgamation, such that less than equal to amalgamation, uh, uniqueness. Is simply less than equal to n plus one amalgamation. Uh, so now, for simplicity, notation is simply I suppress these emphasis. So naming, and then by is always algebraic closure, and then given two set automorphism, denote means collection of automorphism permuting A union C while fixing C pointwise, and then given a type automorphism the type is automorphism of solution set over the parameter. Okay, so what is Frevich correspondence? So now fix the uh, stable theory, fix this uh, one of two n plus one independence realization of P. Then tilde set is like that, and then boundary set is like that, and then we define this group uh, gamma sub n of P, which is permitting this tilde set while fixing this boundary set. Uh, and then Frevich correspondence says, that in T stable, if it has less than or equal to uniqueness, then this homology group is actually isomorphic to this gamma sub n, which is always a proper abelian group. Uh, so this is indeed something like very analogous to, to homotopy group. So this connect the homology group together with homotopy group. That's the reason why we name it Gravitz uh, correspondences. Uh, there is some mismatch uh, between number here. You know, this uh, usually fundamental group or the fundamental group is pi 1. So only um, the, but here only gamma 2 plays like uh, uh, D 
the uh, fundamental group point, and then gamma 1 is always amphis, always trivial, and which is somehow different information. So, so I think pi 2 is something like gamma 3 here, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so uh, I will explain more precisely what I mean by this tilde set uh, and this uh, the boundary set a little more. Okay. So when only when n is equal to 3. So here is boundary set is pointwise fixed and tilde set is permitted. Okay, what is boundary set? n is equal to 3, c1, c2, c3, independent realization of complete time, fixed type p. Then you take just boundary, algebraic closures of boundaries. That is, this is pointwise fixed. Okay, then what is tilde set? Tilde set is intersection of first this blue set that is poor algebraic closure of c1 and c2, c3. Intersecting with uh, the three union of algebraic cross the set, and then honestly, you take this green set, union of three algebraic cross set, and then you take a uh, definable closure of this set, but which I don't know how to draw it. So then, that's the definable closure intersecting with the original algebraic closure of C1 and C2, C3, that is tilde set. Then your higher dimensional analog is the uh, gamma sub n for ultra again. Okay, um, Okay. so how did we prove this? And then, uh, I'm not going to really get into detail, but more important thing is why do we call it homotopy? That might be more important. Actually, some years ago, we proved this when n is equal to 2. And then, when n is equal to 2, the technique is, here is, this is just the, you know, the, um, and the uh, direct uh, system of abelian groups coming out of this failure of theory uniqueness, and then uh, that actually you can make it the uh, uh, user group, right? and then the vertex group forms is a, is a kind of component of the dynamic system of uh, a finite abelian group. Then you take the inverse limit, then uh, it, it is actually gamma sub n. Then this. Uh, uh, the way this is actually work done by uh, not me but uh, the the Goodrich and Collinson for uh, for this construction of uh, construction of the uh, failure of the finish constructing of usual group point. How do they construct that? Usually in model theory, when you construct some group or certain structure, you only initially have some chunk. That means only operation makes sense between independent element. Then you just quotient pi or double it and quotient pi to make it whole uh, non independent point being taken care of. So that's the exactly the same way. So and when n is equal to 2, from the failure of this uh, witness, which is you can really construct a bit by bit this the, um, uh, uh, groupoid, then uh, the uh, one, you, you only, you know, groupoid is constructed with, with independent object. But then now you take a double and quotient it, make a full group of So, you know, definitely we can generalize this. But there are a lot of obstacles. First, there is no right notion of this higher dimensional group point in literature. We honestly look around, look around uh, all the possible, uh, but there's, there doesn't exist anything. The secondly, you know, the quotient type from, if you, even if you can get independent one, then quotient type into non-independent or repeated point, it's immensely complicated. It's almost impossible. So, but so that so what we can do is we can manage define new notion of a polygroup of higher dimensional uh, generalization generalization of the um, uh, the group of it, but only in this in this context distinct point are independent point correspond in some sense. So only this definition makes sense independent. Uh, I mean distinct point object. So I'll let me more precisely what I'm saying. So now I'm going to define polygroup. This is also again nothing to do with model theory, just a general definition. So newly defined by, by, by us. So uh, an I quasi group point is just a simple structure. So uh, I P two P three P N minus and P Q. Here I is we can understand it just a collection of a set of the uh, uh, set of objects. Set of objects, and then the 
P2, P2 is morphism between distinct two objects, distinct two objects. P3 is morphism on the fiber of a distinct three object. And P sub M, or sometimes we're just written P is morphism on the fiber of a distinct N object on objects of R. And then what is Q is, as you can imagine, is a composite uh, of morphism. But, but when higher dimensional, no longer function, this is uh, just the uh, relation. And then what is this pi? Pi is part particularly pi 2 is the uh, designating this object, this, for example, pi 2 uh, designate given a morphism belong to uh, the phi of uh, two objects, two distinct objects, which is actually initial object, which is a uh, terminal object, and then higher dimensional analog. So that is possible for it. And then, you know, pi k more precisely map uh, morphism on k many distinct object to the k tuple of uh, k minus one morphisms on k minus, uh, uh, morphisms on k minus one distinct uh, uh, object, right? I will, uh, the next slide shows what I mean by compatibility. And you satisfy, then uh, this is uh, compatible, and then this is unique. The compatibility means you satisfy this compatibility condition. Now, we say, uh, we say this uh, quasi group point, this poly group point, it satisfies our associativity. So, what is associativity? So, with the usual case, usual case, n is equal to 2 case. So, this uh, n is equal to 2 case, you know, it almost, uh, you know, it's a kind of essential fragment of usual group void, this 2 uh, quasi group void. What is uh, associativity? What is Q relation there? That is Q relation, eternal relation in usual group void. What is that? That is if it takes a object 0, 1, 2, say, 0, 1, 2. Then you take the morphism from uh, 1, 2. And then say morphism G, which is the uh, 2, 2, belongs to from 2 to 0. Then you compose it, G sub F. Then that belongs to uh, the, uh, the 1, to, 1 to 0, right? Compose it. So then the Q relation is something satisfied by this F, comma, G, comma, G sub F, right? So that is a Q relation. Then Q relation is associative when n is equal to. That means this competition is associated. What does that mean? That is you have say four object composing this tetrahedral figure. Say one top triangle there and bottom three triangle. So bottom three triangle there are six edges. Bottom three triangle has satisfies Q relation. Then top triangle already edges points are you know morphisms are determined. Then that edges also satisfies Q relation, right? That is actually associated with the composite. Uh, I just explained this in terms of Q. Then the same thing, just the, the higher dimensional analog is associativity. Okay, let me, uh, by picture, uh, let me visualize our uh, polygon. So, these are object, two objects, distinct object. Then these are uh, element in P2. So these are element in P1. That is morphism on the fiber of uh, object C1 and C2. And pi2 designate, which is the uh, initial object, which is the terminal object of this morphism. And then one more, oops. Then you have, say, morphisms on the fiber of D1, C2, C3, uh, the uh, morphisms. Then pi3 goes to, like, uh, uh, morphism on the edge, and then also morphism on the edge, and then with the active tuple of the morphism on the edge. Then you can have, say, uh, actually five of, uh, 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 the morphism on five of C1, C2, C3, one surface, two surface, the other surface. So four elements can be compatible if the image of pi 3 are the same. So, right. so this is kind of visualization of the uh, um, oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, this quadruple point, uh, as I said, if it's associative, then it's polygroup point, which is connected, it means reasonably connected, reasonably, you know, there is no like a 
If something should be coming from the image of pi, then that is that. So, and then so far here is definition of general definition of polygon for quadruple. Poly. Now, within model theory context, we have symmetry between this. That is just this quadruple point existing definable manner, relatively definable manner, and all policies, all independent point, and such that this relation, pi relation, is uh, actually isolated and then is algebra. So, symmetry between is simply this polygon point exists within Molly sequence, definable manner, uh, with some uh, isolation and then algebra. So the fact is, this is the fact, this is the fact, that given arbitrary Molly sequence. So, Molly sequence in stable theory just independent realization, arbitrary independent, and many independent realization fixed, fixed time. If it has n less than n uniqueness, but does not have, please have, say, n plus 1 uniqueness, then this, this set, this tilde set minus definable closure of this uh, boundary is not empty. So then it, it is witnessed by some finite bit, finite, uh, uh, you know, this, 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 uh, this even realization doesn't need to be finite. Uh, oh, no, no, no. I, I, don't, I mean, in this context, it's uh, finite. But, okay, right. So, anyway, this, this, this within is the failure of n plus 1 uniqueness. Then, then what happened? Not within this u, but this is captured by some extended one, still finite, and you can recover, recover this definable manner, this generic polygon. And then where is the proof? Because, as I said, now higher dimensional case, no notion of vertex proof, because we forget about you know, to make everything easier, we forget about the repeated point. So vertex is in n is two plus a comma a. So repeated point, same point. So then group comes from outside. What is that? That is just the uh, automorphism group of this. The fact is, you can find a finite abelian group which uniformly bounds, which uniformly acts on any type of this one, same type, right? So it's actually, it's very, very nice. I mean, you can, you can find, no, you don't need to worry about vertex curve whatsoever. Just leave outside, somewhere inside the closure of the empty set, which uniformly bound and regularly acts on this, the, uh, all the solutions. Then now, what? You collect all this possible from the failure of n plus one uniqueness, then you collect all this definable, Quasi group, and then corresponding groups, corresponding finite abelian groups, then canonically forms a direct system of finite abelian group. If you take the inverse limit, then it is gamma sub n. The rest thing you have to do is like a, find the proper homomorphism from homology group to gamma sub n. And then this is a sufficient justification that we can call this gamma n as a homotopy group. The interesting thing is. Interesting thing is, this gamma and n, this, this, this finite group, sorry, sorry, in this level, this group has to be abelian, means that similar to the um, similar homology theory, you know, I said the pi 1 corresponds to gamma 2. So, gamma 3, all this group has to be abelian. If it's non abelian, Different from usual group point, it doesn't make sense. So it's a quite surprising analogy between uh, the abelianity of the homotopy group existing the single homology theory and with this new definition. Okay, so uh, there are skip the proof, but the, this is actually one of the main points uh, in the proof. I skip the proof. Okay, last minute, I will uh, the rest of the other works with my students, Sun Young Kim and Zhang Lee. Uh, these are classifications, so our, you know, people running out of time. So, as I said, pi 2 is, usually pi 1 is non-abelian in, 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 in uh, homology theory, homotopy theory. But uh, in the Goodrich and Kodasimikov construction, their group is, pi 2 is always abelian. So, I think something is missing, so with my student, we actually find another chemical fundamental group, which is, uh, actually carries more information, which doesn't need to be abelian, but 
this gamma 2 is a sample of that group. So I think then it makes more fitting. This the fundamental gamma 2 is, is a non abelian, but you know, your abelianization in our context is taking sample instead of quotient by derived group. So I think the, okay, the thing I've done, I've done with the classification is uh, the fact is that this Rosy, not just simple theory, uh, Rosy theory, first homology group, as far as P is not scattered, then it's zero. So the thing is simple then due to three amalgamation, the minimal length of two chain having one shell boundary is just one triangle. But in Rosy theory, with distinctive, example, with distinct one shell, one shell, the minimal length of two chain having that one shell boundary does not bound. I mean, you can with the different example, there is no uniform bound. And then with the classification, you can like uh, have this kind of uh, chain of, so that this uh, board face is a boundary. You can always using suitable uh, operation which keeps the boundaries. We can rearrange all this two chain having one shell boundary as this work form. So that here you take a boundary, of course, you know, the adjacent one is the downward, this all cancelled out, upper part is cancelled out. So this work is cancelled out. And then uh, they also give their own work to classify certain, you know, related to combinatorial linear algebraic condition, determining certain classified conditions. So I think this is just the beginning of the story. I think many things will uh, keep going. So I think I finish my talk. Shall I answer any questions? <coughs> yes, please. But please come to the microphone and ask your short question. So in algebraic topology, you have not just the fundamental group, but higher homotopy groups. Right. Is there, do you have ideas about how you might extend it? I said the higher homotopy group is just the, uh, this group corresponds to gamma 2. Ah. Uh, That's higher homotopy group, and then all the higher topic, but I said one correspond to two, two correspond to three, and then higher homotopy group for gamma n has to be abelian, but gamma two uh, originally only abelian, but there is more possibly other one which doesn't need to be abelian, but gamma two is the center of that group. So I, to me, I think the, that might be more likely to be more fundamental group. <laughs> at, at least two case, uh, and that only works on any two case. Like a uh, home to be group, home to be group case, pi 2 is always available, right? right? So, okay. Answer, oh, you, you have a question. Please come to the microphone. Maybe this is the last question. Is symmetric witness uh, something to do with calculating the nth homology group? Of course. <laughs> so, I mean, this is kind of definable manner. You can recover this higher uh, dimensional group. So you really, that does exist within modern theory context. It's not just arbitrary uh, abstract notion, but that really exists. Witness means it really exists. So, right, yeah. So, uh, let us thank the speaker again. Um, I think you're, you're the best of uh, course, class, so you're, 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 you're,